We'll start a new uh, event, a new Pick My Brain event. Um, but first of all, please check, uh, check in in the app because we do need your feedback. And uh, also, as, um, as a rule, maybe in the next period, you all put your full names so we know uh, who we're talking to and uh, we all have a, a look at each other and uh, say hello to each other at least as much as we cannot do more uh, for this for this uh, period um, a big big thank you a big thank you to our partners that uh, has been sticking with us all along through good and bad you guys rock uh, we stick together. These are the moments that we uh, we prove that we're a close group uh, and uh, good friends and good people and uh, great companies. So thank you to all of you. Um, also, next event, next event. It's uh, a little different huh? as we have. We're gonna have Damian Dragic. Uh, he's, uh, for some of you that don't know him, uh, he's a great jazz player. Excuse me, I've been interrupted uh, by some weird people, small people that, you know, come along, take you by surprise. Uh, so Damien uh, is going to be with us talking about creativity, talking about his uh, anxiety, talking about his time. Uh, with, with great people on stage and his fears going on the stage and his uncertain times and uh, it's a great story. I'm one of the lucky ones that I had to prep this guy. I mean, this it's just a, a, a great experience to talk to, to him. Uh, so I'm excited about our next uh, event as well. Uh, but let's uh, get to this event and uh, Alina, uh, she's been with us for uh, for the ones most of you that uh, were with us in the November forum. She's been in our panel. She's a panelist. She was a panelist talking to us about uh, you know economy proof organizations. I mean, hello. You know, it's uh, it's been a great event. Uh, I mean, I don't know if we should say that. It shouldn't be. It should be one of those you know bad things that never happen and uh, for us to say hey, we just organized some terrible event that never had any meaning but it was not like that alina has over 20 years in the market research industry uh, she is among the first specialist form in this field in romania after 1990 uh, her professional trajectory covers both firms from the market research industry as well as leading FMCG companies. Uh, since 2012, Alina has been running Ipsos Southeast Europe, part of the French-based market research group, the third global market research uh, company worldwide. So Alina, welcome uh, to our Pick Our Brain and thank you for being with us again. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here today. It's great, and uh, we'll, we'll go through uh, some personal uh, questions as well as uh, company research because we all want to find out things. So let's start with this period. This, uh, how this economic recession impacted you and uh, Ipsos? Well, the first question I ask myself as a business leader, seeing all these people in the front line, uh, was a very um, honest question, I guess. Are we discretionary or essential to the business, uh, to society? Is our existence helpful in any way? Uh, and that was after the first, uh, after the first shock and after the lockdown. And then we realized that if our clients do not communicate to their clients, now more than ever, uh, it's suicide. And if they don't understand how to change their tone of voice in the new context, it's double suicide. So our self-esteem coming back. Um, uh, it's true that what's currently happening uh, is impacting us significantly. Uh, I think around half of our business uh, is in face-to-face -face data collection, 
which was uh, closed. Uh, our latest, uh, our last interview in the field uh, was conducted on uh, 20th of March. And what was good about it is that we've kickstarted uh, our um, um, digital strategy. We were in the online business for quite some time, but it was still around 30% of the business or even less. Uh, so that was, um, that was a good part. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we are seeing three client categories. Client categories, uh, the ones that are um, stopping everything because they want to be careful with their cash. Uh, the second category are clients which are so busy doing things and being out there because they are needed, as they don't have time anymore to ask themselves, uh, "Am I doing the right thing? Uh, what does the consumer want?" They just have to to keep going. And it's a third category of clients, um, irrespective if they are winning or losing, they uh, realize that it's important to be in contact with, um, with um, the consumer every day. But all in all, we are seeing a business drop of about 30% if you are to compare January, April last year with uh, the same period this year. Uh, from what I know from our industry, uh, the, the drops can be down to 70, 60, 70% uh, in some cases. So yeah, it's an industry which is affected and uh, it's an industry who has to reinvent itself in order to, to remain um, functional uh, during this time. Uh, how, how did you react on, on this past period, this past to go, okay, let's, let's not take the whole thing, or let's do take the whole thing and after that, the last week. What actions did you take? Well, last week has the advantage of having a recency effect. Uh, so I think the question is, uh, is well formulated, if I may say so. Uh, we are reviewing business plans every week. Uh, there is no such a thing as uh, uh, even medium term uh, strategy. It's true that we have a projection until the end of the year in both revenues and expenses, but actually we are revising that uh, every week. Uh, the, one of the biggest challenges was to keep in contact with uh, clients and colleagues. Uh, with clients on one hand, because there is a mass of online communication and emails and we didn't want to add to that. So we try to use different channels in order to reach our, cl our clients in a way that it's not spam or that it's not burdening their inboxes which are already heavy loaded. Uh, we are doing webinars for clients, so we upped up our social media communication, um, uh, we are doing corporate communication more frequently than before. Uh, whereas with, um, with uh, employees, um, it's weekly communication with them, um, phone calls, um, every day um, um, checking their polls. Uh, we are currently organizing a, um, what we call the vitality scanning. So an internal survey to check the pulse of our employees, bo both personally and in terms of uh, the way they see the, um, the business uh, going and their role in, in the further evolution to keep them, um, to keep them um, uh, with us. And uh, not only in terms of checking on their uh, health and well-being and overall status, but making sure we uh, take them with us along the way uh, to the uh, relaxation, let's put it this way. And one of the important questions we uh, asked ourselves uh, every week and last week maybe even more is um, the answer to the question, what do we want not to return to? Because everybody thinks that, okay, we are going back to the things we used to do and the person we used to be. But I think despite all the disadvantages, now we have the, uh, the opportunity to ask ourselves, what from the past do we not want to have again in our lives, personally and, and professionally? And I think that for the business, it's, uh, it's a forced uh, second curve, if I am to uh, pick that um, uh, famous, uh, famous line. We are forced to take the second curve um, now all, even if we like it or not, or even if we were prepared um, for that or not. Okay. Uh, now I, I mentioned I mentioned uh, you being part of our panel uh, last forum, and uh, you told us about the crisis in two thousand eight. Uh, what what did you use? Uh, what what 
what learnings did you take from that and apply it now? Or are there any that you did and you found out similarities or you, you did take decisions based on uh, your experience from the past one? Well, uh, during the previous crisis, I was uh, selling beer. I was working for Asahi Breweries. So I guess I was merrier than, than I'm now. Uh, but um, from that crisis uh, and uh, corroborating uh, what happened then with, with what happens now, I think I can take uh, three, uh, three principles. Um, three plus one, and I'm talking about the one uh, in a minute. The first one is that self-pity doesn't work. Because uh, the first, um, uh, maybe the first uh, thing we feel tempted to do is, oh my, what do I do? Uh, the clients are not uh, ordering so much as before. Uh, consumers don't want to answer our uh, questions. Are we really necessary to the greater good of the world? So self-pity, no. Uh, fear uh, makes people, I think, stupid. When we fear a lot, our um, limbic brain takes over. So our rational brain is reduced to, to silence and we don't want that because we need our brains to think. So we need to keep going, although every morning seems, uh, seems a, little, a little harder. Then we need to capture the signals from the market and adapt fast. And that is true irrespective of the industry. Uh, if we think that we know uh, what's going on, we are probably not listening. The rate of change today is so substantial uh, and even though we may not see it immediately, it will undoubtedly affect us. So we have to keep our eyes and, uh, and ears open. For example, with clients, a, a lesson we've learned is that this is no time for hunting. Uh, this, um, we think about selling everything in terms of uh, hunters and gatherers. And historically, we at Ipsos were very much into the hunter um, paradigm, let's, let's put it this way. And uh, during this period, we realized that uh, attracting new clients via cold calling or uh, very uh, rational business approaches doesn't work. So everything has to be done with empathy. And it's very difficult when people are afraid and when uh, the focus is on the business at hand and on the immediacy of things, it's very difficult to lose. It's very easy to lose that empathy. Uh, we, need to, we need to remember to use it in business because it's, uh, it's very much needed. We need to adapt fast. Uh, one thing I've learned on my own skin, let's put it this way, is that we have no time or less time for corporate decision making, the usual way. And one example here would be uh, right after the, uh, the, the lockdown, we thought about how can we contribute? Because we work the same schedule we used to work, so it's very difficult for us to engage in any uh, maybe volunteering or other activities. So using what we know best, how can we contribute? And we uh, thought about organizing a, a quantitative study to take the pulse of consumers. Uh, that was an, a red ocean. And because we thought about it so much in the same way we, we used to take decisions, thinking, pondering, being democratic, consulting the team, whatever, this didn't work. So what we did, we came back uh, shortly after the beginning of April with the results of our study, is it was late. So it was a red ocean thing, maybe a good idea, but it was a red ocean thing late. And the market was full of these studies done by uh, small local companies uh, and the findings they brought to the table um, fulfilled uh, the thirst for the information in, uh, in this area. So we need to act fast. We need to relearn. We need to have very short loops of, uh, of feedback versus the usual corporate laddering in terms of, of decision making. So this we've learned uh, on our own skin and this is just an example. And the third principle after self-pity doesn't work and we need to capture the signals from the market and adapt fast uh, was zero-based thinking. Uh, we need to ask, I mean, every time we, we are doing the budget year on year, we take as a proxy the previous year. We tend to believe falsely that uh, the past is giving a clue into what's going to happen into the future. And that's not the case anymore. We need to ask about each and everything we do. Why do we do it this way? Do we still need that or not? How can this be done differently? 
And I think what this crisis meant to, meant to achieve is that it forced us to ask these questions in order to be uh, more agile and more oriented to what's happening in the marketplace. I know, I know you prepared some, uh, some things for us. From your market research, what trends did you identify that the leaders must be aware of in order to adjust their strategies? Uh, I have prepared some slides. Uh, we are um, fortunate to work for a data company, uh, a data gathering company. And uh, when I first joined Ipsos, I was a bit intrigued by the slogan uh, the company had at the time, which was nobody's unpredictable. And I, th I thought it was a little bit arrogant and know it all, uh, and that nobody can know anything about somebody. Uh, in the meantime, uh, the company uh, changed their um, it, it, it slogan. Uh, it's um, more towards uh, the market and more towards um, uh, what we know and also what we don't know about, uh, about the company, about, uh, about people. Um, and uh, I think the title of the presentation that I, short presentation that I prepared today, um, I think it's, um, it's already on the screen, right, Virgil? Yes. Yes, okay. It's an article uh, um, wrote by a Spanish um, um, journalist from El País, Ramos Felices y no lo sabíamos. We were happy, but we didn't know we were happy. Uh, many people were um, uh, very much uh, touched by this uh, title, are others less so. Uh, but I think it's a good place to start. Were we really happy? And if yes, what stops us in uh, being happier again? And uh, at the time when we thought we were happy, but we didn't know it, to paraphrase uh, uh, the Spanish journalist, we conducted a study, uh, which is called Ipsos Global Trends. We do it every three years because a trend is a trend. It's something that change has a latency in, in changing. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't move that fast. Uh, and the trends are in the middle of a model, actually. It's not just trends we are studying. We start from the macro forces, the ones that are the most latent to change in society. We go to the signals. How are the things we see uh, manifestly uh, every day happening around us? And in the middle, there is a relationship between the macro forces on one hand and the trends and, and the signals on the other hand. So if the macro forces have a very high likelihood of happening and very low likelihood of going away, we have the trends who are the way a person's values are manifesting through their behaviors, attitudes, uh, uh, maybe opinions. And then the signals, which are the visual means for us to see what values a person have, has. Uh, to, to give a very, very brief example, the macro force, is maybe, the macro force may be uh, going uh, vegan or vegetarian. The trend can be uh, more and more people eating less meat because meat production is using uh, natural resources uh, to a high extent. And the, signals will be, the signal will be that the boulangerie around the corner uh, has decided to make spinach-based um, 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 pastries, for example. So that's a difference between, a, a, that's the way, a potential way, a macro force is translated into, into a signal. Um, many clients asked, oh, okay, okay, but is this model, you've done it when we were happy when we didn't know it. So last year in, in, uh, in the summer, summer to, with, and autumn. Uh, how is this uh, COVID thing affecting us? In our view, uh, COVID comes here. So it's all the things we see around us are not making the trends irrelevant, but are changing the signals, are changing the way a trend manifests in our behaviors and attitudes and uh, communication uh, that, we, that we have. And uh, just to give you some, uh, some examples, uh, this is uh, an example of a, uh, some, some signals. Uh, this is uh, from the study we've conducted at the beginning of April. Uh, and the way we consider that we need to be worried about what's happening uh, currently in, uh, in the society and around us. And you can see that uh, at least at that point in time, so one month ago, 
we thought that the danger is more like out there rather than down here. Uh, the further you go, the higher the level of worrying. So at that time at least, and this is why we see the population nowadays in Romania quite polarized. There are two groups of, uh, of, uh, of people. Some say, uh, I need to stay indoors to protect my health. And other people say, I need to go out there because I need to, to earn my bread and I need to, to keep my job. So at least one month ago, we consider that the danger is more likely to be out there than, than down here. And if we look at the, uh, the figures overall, in Romania versus other countries, we tend to believe this, uh, this graph. Uh, today, I think, the, ministry, uh, the Romanian Ministry of Health uh, made a statement that out of the, all the deaths we had from COVID in Romania, 80% would have died of comorbidities anyway. So we need to put things in perspective and we think what's the real incidence of, uh, of death. And apparently, at least uh, from the study we've done, uh, it seems that more and more Romanians are preoccupied with their economic welfare uh, for first and foremost, and only then uh, by the um, uh, by the the technical the, the uh, sanitary uh, crisis. Um, we've measured some segments of um, of people, and we see that 34% of Romanians are pragmatists when it comes to the crisis. We see skeptics, they are around 7%. We have some wait and see. Let's see where things will be going. Uh, let's not panic. Let's, um, let's watch, let's uh, hear what the official and non-official communication says. Uh, only a quarter of us are, uh, are alarmed and 20% are concerned. So um, given all that's been communicated into the, me the media, uh, I think this is the, um, um, backbone, let's say, of our overall attitude towards COVID, which is first and foremost pragmatism, and only after that uh, people which are, uh, which are genuinely alarmed. These are the overall trends we've discovered um, uh, during the study. Uh, and maybe to an un, uh, un, um, unsaid question, uh, are these trends still valid? Uh, look at the top five. So it's climate emergency on the first uh, um, step of the, um, of the values in the hierarchy of values. It's climate emergency and there are many, many voices saying that uh, the, the spread of COVID, the appearance and the spread of, uh, of um, the new coronavirus was given to climate, uh, was uh, caused by climate mutations. We have trust in medicine, aspiring to health and fear of the future in the top five values. They are still valid today as they were valid um, four or five months ago when we've done the study. But in Romania, things look a little bit different. And this is where the pragmatism uh, enters the, the scene uh, once more. You see on the left-hand side, uh, the top five trends for Romania, for, for global, climate emergency, trust in medicine, big tech, aspiring to health and fear of the future. And for Romania, we see health self-reliance and individualism as making up to the top five, although they are in top 15 in the global, uh, in the global hierarchy. What does this mean? Uh, health self-reliance means that people do not trust the doctors uh, fully. Dr. Google is here. Um, uh, the evaluation of, uh, of uh, their um, physicians, of their medical doctors, were given um, uh, grades on social media apps and or on medical apps. It's uh, then uh, the, um, the propensity to listen to a, a word of mouth, alternative treatments, um, recommendations from, uh, from relatives. And we see that health self-reliance is usually very high in countries where um, uh, the trust in the overall public health system is lower. So we see here countries as India, Indonesia, Saudi Arabia, uh, and at the totally opposite end, we see countries like Denmark, or France, or Sweden, or, or Germany. Indiv individualism as well. It's not that individualism which is manifested in the Protestant countries uh, with uh, self-reliance, self-assertion, um, individual responsibility, accountability. No, it's the, in Romania, it's the individualism of, I know better, I can take it on my own. I can find a way. 
um, trust me, I know better. So these kind of uh, individual um, approaches and strategies to succeeding. And this leads me back to the pragmatism of even of approaching the, the, current, uh, the current crisis. And there, there, is a lot, there are a lot of anecdotes around what people are actually writing in that declaration of going out um, uh, in the street of all the creative ways they are uh, uh, using for, for doing this, although the regulations are, uh, are, very, are very clear. That's, uh, link, that links both these trends, individualism and health self-reliance. I know better, I find a way, I have my meat and in my own, uh, in my own way. Uh, I would not want to, I do not want to insist on, on all the trends. It's, a, it's, it's quite a complex, uh, quite a complex uh, study. But these are 12 trends overall, uh, going from climate antagonism, which involves, um, uh, on one hand, climate advocates and um, uh, those that are, are tired of uh, environmentalism. Uh, health appears uh, twice. Uh, and uh, uh, it relates also to healthy eating, to uh, trust in doctors, to immortality through science, uh, the interest of the people worldwide in all the things uh, related to, um, to aging. Brand authenticity is important, and we see that uh, uh, around us more and more. Um, all the things that brands and companies did, and some of them were applauded and others were penalized by, by consumers. All the dilemmas relating, uh, related to the data and all the surveillance apps uh, and uh, the, even the Google uh, mobility, um, all these kind of tracking apps that uh, some scientists believe and social scientists believe, they may uh, alienate um, the, the population even, even further after the social distancing and the mistrust in, um, in actually meeting, uh, meeting people we don't know. Uh, question marks around globalization. I think we'll see um, a return back to the roots. And I'm giving one example. It's um, New Zealand. Uh, lucky for them that they are, uh, it's only water around them. Uh, and I think the closest piece of land is uh, three, four hours uh, in any direction you would take. But on the other hand, although the Prime Minister of New Zealand was praised for um, all the decisions that she took and all the public communication that she, um, that she had, uh, they have uh, decisively said that they are closing their borders for one year. So we will see a back to, back to local uh, return and movement uh, at least uh, in the in the medium uh, in the medium term, also capitalism is put under um, under a question mark, and we are seeing um, a lot of uh, beautiful examples of um, companies willing to let go of some of their profits in order to support the the community, um, and I think uh, Dan uh, last week uh, gave us a very nice example of Volvo, probably the safest place where you should be right now. It's uh, it's your home. And also for some consumers, a return to nostalgia and simplicity. A return to the roots, a question mark about, do I need it, all these things I used to buy, were uh, making me happy all the things uh, I used to do. It's a very good moment of realigning uh, one's, uh, one's values. We wouldn't have been here probably out of our own free will, but now it's a good uh, moment to question business and personal. Uh, values. Um, this is a very, very fresh um, report. Uh, it is uh, called the Ipsos Reputation Council. There are interviews done um, with the top executives from all the com big companies around the world. It's one-to-one uh, -one, uh, interviews. And uh, these are uh, the top industries uh, worldwide. And what is their danger of their reputation being at stake nowadays? And uh, we see the closer you are to the dollar sign, the most uh, impacted or the most at risk your reputation is. And we see here energy companies, we see here technology companies, and we see here big pharma. On the other end, here, you have tobacco. So the hierarchy of the companies and the values uh, and the pressure that the society is putting on, on industries is also, is also changing. 
And uh, as long as CSR was something probably nice to have uh, some several years ago, now it's an essential part of any sustainable business, uh, business model going forward. Coming back again to the study we did at the beginning of April among Romanians, although the pharmaceutical companies are thought to be uh, quite um, in a gray area, and we see the debate with Didier Raoul in France uh, saying that uh, the treatment doesn't cost that much actually, um, and um, some other um, leading um, um, People from uh, com pharmaceutical companies act, uh, acting in Romania saying that the treatment is actually as expensive as one dollar. The pharmaceutical companies are uh, placed within almost uh, entire responsibility to uh, combat uh, com combat the spread of the of the virus. These are global figures. Uh, we don't have that for Romania, but I think it's interesting to see which stage people are at. Currently, uh, we are uh, getting used to the situation we are in. We try to adapt from a new corner we've uh, we've made in our um, in our house to be able to to work for those of us who didn't have a home based office. To um, I don't know the schedule for making the grocery shopping, um, all the transactions we had to do with the bank, even if we were digitalized or or not. 18% uh, of the people are in anticipation. Most of them are in parts of the world where uh, the, their world has, uh, has opened. Uh, still not the case for, um, for Romania. Only 3% believe that the pandemic is behind them. And that's most probably in the countries uh, where um, um, the, the opening is, is higher. And I'm talking here about uh, China. Our colleagues uh, are already doing face-to-face -face interviews even in the Wuhan region as of last week. Romania again. One month ago, 30% of Romanians thought that um, by summertime, uh, we will have the, uh, the pandemic behind us. However, more than that, um, around 40% of Romanians would say that probably in the, uh, the autumn, probably next year. Uh, so people are very cautious and we, we will see that um, most likely in their uh, holiday habits, consumption habits, uh, stocking up more, uh, buying uh, bigger, uh, bigger packs, multi-packs, uh, going into private labels. And that's a question for us as well as businesses. Are there cheaper options that deliver more or less the same thing? Because these consumers we see here, 13%, 12 14%, the ones that uh, feel that the, the pandemic will not be over soon, might be less, um, might, might be lowering their expectations. So this is something we need to ask ourselves. Is there something else in the market that offers what I offer uh, at, at a reasonable quality and for a lower price? If yes, how can I match that? If not, how can I, sh I showcase my added value so as for my offer to be worth the price? So all of us would need to, to ask these questions because consumers, be they companies or, uh, be, uh, consu or consumers, be they um, companies or uh, physical persons will ask this question, themselves this question and will, uh, will act accordingly. I would not want to end on a negative note though. Uh, this is a question we asked in the uh, Global Trends um, uh, study last autumn. The question was, uh, I believe or not that all the medical conditions will be uh, curable eventually and Romania was on the fourth place among the 30, uh, 32 countries we, we assess saying yes. Uh, so that's a, that's a good thing that fuels our optimism, that also fuels our uh, individualism and uh, health self-reliance of course because if, uh, if COVID-19 is curable then uh, we can carry out uh, our regular business hoping uh, uh, for the for a good, um, a good future. But all in all, um, I think what we currently see uh, for two, three days already 
is that uh, the country starts to open a little bit and very shyly uh, from, uh, I don't know, bookstores selling books uh, over the counter just to keep, uh, just to keep themselves open to um, all the, um, the, the services offered uh, online and all the, the apps that were launched uh, during our, uh, the past month. So we are quite an adaptable country and quite an optimistic one. And I think businesses should count on uh, the pragmatism of consumers in order to keep going and make their new offer uh, accepted by the new consumer. And last but not least, uh, trends are here to stay. Uh, this is um, uh, a graph from, uh, from the UK. And uh, you see on the diagonal with very light gray, the penetration of internet, uh, which went up dramatically from 13% to 93%. Uh, and the, horizon the horizontal lines are showing that uh, trends are immutable, or at least some of them, even the ones saying are feared that technical progress is destroying our lives. Uh, apparently it was the same 20 years, it was felt the same 20 years ago and now. Um, so individualism is here to stay, fear of the future as well, uh, climate emergency as well. So we need to take all these into consideration in the way we design our brands, in the way we design our uh, product services, and in the way we do our CSR. And that's, that's a real challenge uh, uh, from now on. Thank you, Alina, for, uh, for this presentation. It's, the, the numbers are amazing. Um, but given that, you said there are things that uh, people are not going to go back to. And you, you told us here in this last slide a few of those things. Uh, what do you think you guys uh, gonna go back to or how you see the trends of this you know work from home that it's been have to have in this period how is gonna be the transition uh, we are planning for that um, we will not rush to go back in the first week because we need to we need to keep the distance um, I think that working eight hours a day with a mask on your face is not feasible so what we are going to do is to have 25% uh, uh, of our employees in the office as of the last week of May by rotation. Going back to the office would be a right, not an obligation. Everybody wants to come back to the office, that's for sure. Everybody told us so. Uh, but I think it, this week is your right to be, to, the, uh, to be back to the office. It is not an obligation. Everything will be set there. But we will allow our colleagues more freedom than before in arranging their schedules, uh, mainly because uh, many of them have kids and kids are and schools are not opening uh, this year. Uh, also, in terms of uh, going back to collecting the data face to face, that will not be our first option. The same it uh, it used to be before. Also, the processes we had, we are revisiting them now. Because in many cases, uh, the decision was quite um, slow uh, and we were quite purist in the way we approached methodologies. We wanted them to be extremely crisp from, from an academic point of view. And you realize that sometimes an imperfect response fast is better than a well-crafted response later. And this we need to change in, in the, our mentality. Also, I think we need to work more at our hunting gatherer proportion in the way we approach businesses because we, I think we need to tone down a little bit our hunter attitude and uh, nourish our gatherer more. I think our clients need more and more uh, to be supported uh, in making decisions based on the data they already have rather than continuously collecting new and new pieces of information and overload them with, um, with new stuff. I think we need to see each other. Uh, online communication has its goods and bads. Uh, for example, four people writing to you at the same time on Skype, not knowing that you are already engaged in a different conversation. It's difficult to handle. If I was in my office uh, and I was talking to someone, the other three would have seen this. Uh, so I think online communication, uh, we've seen now all the goods and bads. I was the first advocate from for working from home before. 
uh, uh, not anymore. I realized uh, that uh, being present with people uh, counts sometimes more than um, more than being efficient and being in your bubble and get uh, get work done or get work done. So we need also to change the way we we are managing our teams and uh, the way we relate to to each other. But we tend to compare uh, working from home with this period of exclusive work from home. And uh, I don't think it applies. I think uh, working from home in the next period or whenever this thing starts is going to be gradually and, uh, and mixed. I mean, you know, two out of five days or whatever um, uh, proportion. But people uh, just like you um, kind of saw that you could do it. Like working from home uh, maybe it's, it was an accelerator for some. But did you have any um, studies of this transition now that other countries open up their, their uh, um, waves and uh, you know their restrictions? And also for the others that just jump in anytime or write on the comments any questions you might have. So did you did you have anything like this? Uh, uh, research on this transition? Uh, there are um, several companies uh, opening up, uh, some of them even closer to, to us. And Italy, for example, is uh, starting uh, transitioning back to, the, back to the office. Also, um, even Croatia is uh, all working uh, from the office, 50% uh, 50 50 of the staff are working from the office as of, uh, as of yesterday. Um, they are still using work from home for two reasons. One is not to crowd the office and to allow people to work without masks because uh, it, uh, it's quite difficult to, to use them eight hours a day. Uh, and on the other hand, to allow them for the flexibility in, um, in commuting. Uh, and what they realize is that they can take uh, from work from home only the things that um, are useful like I need to be a little bit secluded when I'm working on something and I need an interrupted time and need to be in the office when I have meetings and when I have to liaise with people uh, to make decisions more, um, more rapidly and more efficiently. Because what we've noticed is that remotely uh, meetings tend to be longer, sometimes um, um, poorly structured or less well structured than a face to face meeting because it's very easy to arrive at a meeting people are jumping on and off meetings more easily and there are more meetings than compared to you, the situation where we had you had to go somewhere to meet people so face to face would be a premium in asking consumers as a, as well as in seeing people so you need to make it worse um, the face to face time will be will be a premium but this uh, mixed face-to-face -face and uh, work from home seems to be uh, a better recipe than one we, what we currently experience for sure. And that uh, versus the current uh, situation when we were 99% uh, in the office. Yep, um, I don't see any, any questions uh, so far, so we'll, uh, we'll continue with the... Uh... Alina. Alina, if I may, if, yes. can, I, can I ask you a question? Can, can you talk a bit more about this premium? Because I, I found it quite interesting, this idea of one-on-one uh, -on -one being premium. You, you, you are referring to that only based on the time available, or you see a more social trend there? Well, I'm, I will use a very trivial parallel, and that's Facebook. Uh, if you have an acquaintance, it's, it's someone's birthday, and you, ha you have an acquaintance, uh, the further the person is from you, the less, the, the less uh, personal the communication is. So if it's just an acquaintance, I'm writing on his wall. Happy birthday, dear, uh, hugs, whatever. If it's a little, the person is a little bit closer, I'm writing in the Facebook chat. A private message may be more uh, developed and uh, with more personalized wishes. If it's even closer, I WhatsApp the person. If it's even closer, I call. If it's very close, we see each other. So 
maybe this is not what everybody does, but many people do that. So I think this will translate um, in the business world as well. And this might make unnecessary face-to-face -face time uh, be moved to online. And having organized face-to-face -face physical discussions uh, to be left for things that are really important and that need also verbal communication, non-verbal communication, para-verbal communication, so all the communication cues uh, to make ourselves understandable. So I think the regular communication would be online, uh, then it would be the telephone, and face-to-face -face time would be a premium because people are busy, because we need to be using physical distancing uh, at least until the end of the year. So we'll be go very cautious who we meet. And then it's the trust variable that comes in. We will meet the people which we have really important things to talk about, either business or personal, and people whom we trust to meet, uh, to meet face to face. So I think we'll see a um, um, reprioritization of the relationships we have with uh, both personal and uh, professional. Thank you very much. May I have a question as well? Yes. Very nice presentation. I agree with you that hunting is not anymore an option. Head hunting as well. So um, I saw on one of your la latest slides a percentage of 14 of Romanians who don't know when exactly this will end. Is there any correspondence of this percentage with the business world, with the business leaders? which means 14% uh, of the business leaders in Romania don't know what's gonna happen because what I'm seeing is that a lot of business leaders hope to come back to uh, the state before the crisis and they just build their business accordingly. I saw also a lot of economists and analysts creating prognoses which are quite optimistic. So is there a translation between this percentage and the business leaders? Well, uh, there was a McKinsey report uh, issued uh, in the last couple of days saying that Europe prepares itself for having at least 60 million unemployer, um, 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 people unemployed. So it, that means around 50% of the total uh, European workforce that uh, the second, uh, that Q2 will be terrible and the Q3 and Q4 will only bring a slight comeback and many companies will not be able to um, get to back to the surface again. So I think uh, also in terms of businesses, if we take a bunch of business leaders and ask them, when do you want this crisis to end? And when do you think the crisis will end? We will get two very different answers. And I think our answers to the question, when do you think it will end, are very much colored by the hope it will end sooner than we think. Thank you. I will, um, we, we do have some questions, so I will jump on it, but uh, to make a, a comment on, uh, you know, that premium one, one, I think I'm, as soon as this open, I'm going to have a coffee with the delivery boy. If you come by, I'll, I'll be there, you know, I don't know how premium that is or not. I'll, I'll be there. Uh, Alina, you presented a segmentation, alarmed, concerned, etc. Do you have uh, correlations between age, education, and this data? Like some people be more fearful than others and, and based on I, have, I don't have it at hand but i can i can share it afterwards because i don't want to speak from memory yes we do have a demographic segmentation which is quite detailed for uh, for each of the segments okay um from uh, Janus, uh do we expect romanians to get more pragmatic in this in the sense of seeking even more individual solutions individual escape even free riding or really looking for expertise given the uncertain times you, you can see also those questions on on the chat in case it helps you reading uh, as along with me but um, um. We are, we are built in, in, in a culture that doesn't see with very good eyes people who say don't know. I remember at the beginning of the 90s, the ones that are uh, uh, 
similar in age with me and can remember. Uh, there were interviews uh, on the TV. Well, um, it was a guy, Viorel Gaitza, who asked people all kinds of things on the street. Uh, and one of the questions was, uh, how do we extract, uh, extract a square root? And uh, uh, some people said with a fork. So uh, instead of saying, well, I don't know what the heck is a square root, they were, were rather saying, uh, making up an answer, uh, just because it's easier to be in the know and to, be, uh, to appear as knowledgeable than, uh, than not knowing. So uh, here we have two layers. Latently, we need guidance and we need expertise. And I think, for example, because I see the question is coming from your notes, what Scuola de Ban did, it was a superb initiative and it was uh, the only one or the most prominent one of its kind. So we pretend we know, but actually we need guidance. So if we go beyond what people declare, we will see a scared, uh, a scared pers person there in need for guidance. But we need to dig beyond this, I know that the square root can be extracted with a fork kind of attitude in order to, to reach the essential questions that the people need to have answered in order to orientate themselves uh, around. But this will not show for each and every area of their lives. The lower you are in that um, uh, hierarchy of uh, trends I showed you before, uh, the more the individualism will manifest itself and the solutions that are handmade, um, uh, hastily made by, by the persons will apply. The higher you are, fear of the future, um, authenticity in communication with the brand, um, um, my own health, my own pocket and uh, um, salary and job, these are the, the places where people uh, actually seek for and, uh, and need guidance. And another question uh, also by Renunz is, does uh, the very pregnant health worry in Romania, three of the top five trends, signal the preoccupation with healthy lifestyle or are just Romanians terrified by the poor status of the medical system? Uh, health self-reliance is on the fourth place in Romania and on the 11th place worldwide. Uh, so it's important worldwide as well. For Romania is more important because yes, we feel that uh, good doctors are um, hard to reach, uh, that we are too much influenced by the forums and uh, by what people are uh, t saying about their uh, uh, diseases and uh, their treatments and about self-medication and uh, about the very heavy reliance on uh, pharmacists instead of going to, to the doctors. Uh, we've done a study last year for Rashi the Association for uh, Medical Producers, and uh, self-medication appeared again as a confirmation as uh, very high. So it's higher in Romania versus the average. Uh, yes, because we trust the, the health system um, less than people in other countries. And also because being in good health is very directly linked with the economical power uh, of, the, of a family and the possibility to cater for the family. So if I'm sick, I'm no longer able to work, thus I cannot provide for, for my family. And this is true in a society where in the average basket of consumption, uh, a very high percentage goes to uh, subsistence, to food and paying, uh, paying one's bills. So it's, it's coming from the fact that um, we have a lower development status as a society and a kind of weak uh, medical uh, medical system. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll go to Edward and we'll come back to your notes so we don't have uh, all the notes questions at once. Uh, what would be two, three changes in consumption behaviors for a Romanian average family? There was a, a saying, I don't know how anecdotal it is, but it was more like a rhetorical question. How come the economy is crumbling down and people only buy what's necessary, what they need? And there's a difference between buying what I need and buying what I want. Uh, and most probably, at least in the short term, people will uh, manifest two, I think, opposite behaviors. One is I'm, uh, 
uh, sticking to the basics, I need to have flour, drojdia, uh, pasta, and um, uh, potatoes in my, uh, in my fridge and pantry. And on the other hand, because I'm giving up on a lot of things, I need to reward myself. So I'm ordering online clothes, books, um, all kinds of uh, cosmetics and um, of self um, or at home um, cosmetic treatments and things like that. That is on the short term. On the uh, medium term, I think people will start slowly revisiting what are they consuming in each category and what are the categories where they can go private label without suffering. It may be milk going from a branded product to a store product. Uh, all the more that people uh, start to find out who's making the, um, um, the private labels for certain retailers. And if the producer is, um, uh, has a very good reputation, the private labels uh, might be as well uh, chosen over the branded ones. Uh, so, but that would be only category by category. So people will make an assessment, which categories I can go uh, a step lower in terms of, of the brand premiumness, and which are the categories where I cannot afford to, to do that. But all the times, uh, at least the way we Romanians are constructed, which is uh, less tolerance to, um, to frustration, uh, we will uh, reward ourselves. For example, in, uh, during the crisis in 2008, people were rewarding themselves with sweet, sweet snacks. So the, the sales of sweet snacks increased uh, during that, um, that crisis because that was one of the things which was not cheap, but could, um, we could afford to, to use to, to pamper ourselves because we were so rational in other areas. So people will use the law of compensation in deciding uh, which category they will, um, they will make compromises on. Alina, may I Alina, have a question? if I may also <laughs> add something, I also think that the lo the, 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 the localization uh, will also be very important. The made in Romania, made in Greece, made in wherever, uh, something that's made in your country and is not coming from some place that you don't know, will also define uh, uh, consumers' uh, choices, I think. We already see this trend. Uh, I personally have a frustration in this respect because I'm, I'm buying for, from a Greek guy in the open market, uh, a cheese that uh, cheese type that they are not bringing anymore because of the uh, lockdown. And I hope it doesn't take too long before they bring it back because I might replace it. So it depends uh, for how long we are making a, a compromise uh, behavioral economics says that in 25 days, if you repeat a behavior constantly enough, you've changed the habit. So if this takes long enough, we might uh, not just temporarily, but permanently change our, uh, change our habits. Uh, but yes, uh, made locally. So one thing is uh, economic, um, geographic uh, um, availability. Things may not be available anymore. And on the other hand, um, people might feel responsible to contribute to the social, uh, contribute socially to the local businesses and buy local just to support the, the local, uh, the local enterprises. So we might see a shift, uh, a shift here. Not sure for for how long it's going to to manifest. Alina, do you think too early to talk about the new profile of the consumer? in general and especially in banking in the new context the profile of the new customers new, new yes new customer well people will be cautious in having any long term spending now uh, what we've seen from um, uh, the real estate market uh, prices have not dropped they are still there at that same level. I had a discussion with a real estate lawyer um, a couple of days ago, and they said that houses are bought and sold the same way as they were before. 
only slowed down a little bit by the availability of uh, getting all the paperwork done in, in real time. Uh, but I think people might be more cautious in terms of uh, getting a long-term relationship, uh, long relationship with a bank in terms of a, a, a loan, a big loan. All the more that we have over 1 million suspended uh, labor contracts uh, as we speak. So until the people see that their workplace is stable and uh, that he, they are not in uh, technical unemployment or that their salaries are not, uh, are not cut, uh, they may be more trustful in uh, having a longer, um, uh, a longer term view in indebting uh, themselves. But during this period, what we've seen is that uh, um, coming back to the first question I rhetorically asked myself, are we discretionary services or, uh, or essential? I think uh, the fact that the banks were so close to, to, to consumers, and there are many, um, many examples in, in this respect, um, it was, was extremely important for uh, entrusting people that uh, a bank can be a partner and not necessarily an entity they might be afraid of, given the fact that uh, their um, um, re revenue, their gains, monthly gains are, uh, are decreasing. So I think mm -hmm. not be necessarily new people uh, that didn't have a relationship with the banks going to the banks, uh, but that banks will preserve their customers, uh, but their behavior will not be as um, openly and risk-oriented as it, it might have been before. And we may see some, um, some cautiousness uh, in the midterm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Helena, uh, now a personal question to, to you. Um, are there things that you used to, to do prior to this situation and you've considered that they are crucial for, uh, for your life and now this whole situation uh, may change, uh, change your mind and which are those things that you've changed? Thank mm. you. Well, I think being, uh, being also a licensed Psycho psychotherapist worked and helped me, uh, as well as uh, my family during this time. It's quite difficult to have uh, to be three people in a house and uh, each in a locked in a room, and being in conferences. So uh, my son is uh, um, a student, and they have uh, uh, all sorts of tests and uh, uh, all sorts of online courses in the, the university. Uh, right now, my husband is in the other room knocking. So first of all, it's tolerance with the private uh, space because I was an only child. I was used to having lots of space uh, just for me. So sharing space uh, with other people, even dear ones, might prove um, might might prove a challenge. Uh, on the other hand, you realize that uh, it was much easier before because you came back. Uh, um, back home in the evening, there were a lot of things to talk about in two hours or three hours. Uh, and the question is, what remains to be said? After all these questions of how was your day and uh, did you buy bread and all these kind of things are solved, there is still a lot of time to talk about the essential things. And I think that was uh, the most important thing I discovered that, uh, and not only with my family, but also with my friends, that we have more time uh, to talk about um, really important things beyond uh, I'm not so happy with my job or uh, what book have you read recently or where are we going on vacation? This question is out the radar. We are not going anywhere. So uh, I think uh, social relationships have gained a lot. Uh, who's your friend and who's not your friend is clearer now. Uh, how do people react when they are afraid, uh, showed up their personalities in a way that nothing else could have done before? Uh, and rather than pointing our fingers to people who are more afraid than us, which uh, at the beginning I made the mistake to do, I'm in the pragmatic skeptic uh, category, be it good or bad, I don't know. Uh, um, developing more empathy and more understanding towards people who hold a different view than us and not being intolerant because some other people may belong to other segments, uh, I think uh, it's what would make us grow more mature out of this crisis. That's my personal lesson. 
out of this. And I think the, the class is not over. I mean, I still have things to learn from this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, one more question is, um, when we speak about Romanians, do we see a fragmented Romania with different focus, a cluster of uh, prosperous, uh, prosperous educated people concerned with lifestyle and another cluster Romania very worried about surviving? Do we see a conflict between them two? We see two groups of people, ones that are uh, too afraid to even get out of the house once a week to do some shopping, although it's allowed. Uh, we see people who, uh, and this happened to me yesterday in the pharmacy, uh, there was a, peop a person at the counter and I went in to ask if they have something as to know if I'm supposed to wait or not. And I was shouted saying I don't observe the social distance. Uh, so um, um, we witness a sort of intolerant, medical intolerance or hygiene or sanitary intolerance among ourselves. Uh, so the people who uh, prefer not to take any of the limited freedoms we are offered and stay indoors and rely on, uh, on courier services and uh, uh, online ordering and things like that. And people who said, it's an assumed risk, I need to protect myself, uh, but I have to get out and I have to work and I have to try to continue my own life. And the problem is that these people are currently confronting each other in social media a lot. Uh, quite uh, in a non-friendly non way, if I may say. I'm seeing a lot of uh, hashtags and some of them are quite, uh, are quite aggressive. Um, I don't see them in the street yet, uh, um, leaving aside my uh, small incident uh, yesterday. Uh, but uh, I think it's, it's, there are two, two groups and um, I'm afraid they might confront each other at some point. Uh, in um, saying that it's better to stay indoors until the, and let the danger pass and um, going outside to, to make sure that uh, we still have an economy to go back to when we get out. Thank you very much uh, for your answers, Alina. Um, we, we don't have more questions on our chat or it's the... Uh, that the stage is still open if somebody would uh, like to ask a live question. If not, um, thank you for this uh, time that you, you gave us for this presentation, for all the data that uh, you've shown us. Uh, like always, it's been, um, um, you know, enlightening. So thank you for that, Alina. Thank you very uh, much. For, for all of you, uh, please don't uh, forget, on Thursday we have uh, Damian De Dragic. This guy has been on the same stage with uh, Cindy Lauper, Shaggy, Joe Cocker, James Brown. I mean, um, it's, it's pretty interesting stuff, uh, a little different, and I'm uh, very excited about it. Uh,